Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Ray, and today I want to go through interior and exterior angles of polygons with you. Now, just a couple of things before we get started. I'm not really going to be talking about all polygons today. I'm going to be focusing on two categories of polygons. So one thing that we'll talk a lot about are what are known as regular polygons. So regular polygons, I'm assuming that you know what a polygon is for this video. Regular polygons are polygons with all congruent angles and all congruent sides. So this guy would be a regular polygon, this guy would be a regular polygon. These are the kinds that I'm going to be talking about. These two are both irregular polygons. Now some of what we'll do in this video will apply to any polygon, but most of what we're going to be talking about is focusing on these kinds, regular. And something else that is important is to talk about concave versus convex. So concave polygons versus convex polygons. Everything I'm going to show you today will be good for convex polygons. Some of it will be good for concave polygons as well, but not all of it. So what's a concave polygon? This isn't the technical definition, but the easiest way to think of a po concave polygon is one that's dented. So if you look at my couple of polygons over here, hopefully you can see that there are two that look a little bit dented, right? So here I would call that a dent, and I would call this over here a dent. So these are concave polygons. And I'll let you know as we go, one of the things we'll be talking about doesn't apply for concave polygons, but will apply for convex, and the other will con apply for concave as well. So let's jump right into this and talk about interior angles of polygons. So one of the first things you want to know is how to find the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. So the best place to start is with a polygon you know. So most of us know, or at least we think we know, that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So if that's something that you're not familiar with, you may want to look that up, or maybe you know it and you can take it on faith for now. So then I might ask a question like, well, what's the sum of the interior angles of something with four sides, right? Now this looks like a square, but it doesn't have to be a square. It could be any four-sided po polygon. I'll show you that that works in a minute. But how do we figure out what the sum of the angles is here? Well, the trick is to realize that a square is really just two triangles. And each one of those triangles sort of brings 180 degrees to the party. So in this square, we've really got two triangles, which is to say 360 degrees worth of angles, right? So there's two triangles there, and if you add that all up, you get 360 degrees. And you can see it doesn't matter if we use this non-square quadrilateral, it's still two triangles, 180 degrees. So it makes no difference if you're a square or just any four-sided shape. We could do the same thing with a five-sided shape, right? So this is a regular pentagon. Again, it doesn't have to be regular. But look, if I were to connect here to here and here to here, now I've got a triangle another one here, and another one there. So there are three triangles making up this pentagon, and that means that it's three times 180, or 540 degrees, if I add up all those interior angles, right? This angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. Hmm. Let's see if we can push this a little bit further. If we go six sides, maybe starting here now, I connect from there to there, connect from there to there, forgive my non-straight lines, and now this time, how many triangles do we have? Well, six sides, we ended up with four triangles. So you may starting be starting to notice a pattern here. That's four times 180, which is 720 degrees, right? How many triangles would you guess are going to be in this seven-sided shape? If you've noticed the pattern, whoa, that was really not straight. If you've noticed the pattern, you may be guessing five triangles. And let's just see if that holds, all right? Here we go. And there's one, two, three, four, five. So there are five triangles there, which means it's five times uh, 180, so that's 800, 900 degrees is the sum of the interior angles in that seven-sided shape. So what's going on here? We always have, right, there are always two less triangles than sides. And if you think about how we make a polygon, that should make sense, because what's the simplest polygon we can have? Well, that would be Mr. Triangle over here. It takes three sides just to get one triangle, doesn't it? Right? There's only one triangle there, but it took three sides to do it. And now as soon as I add another side, I get a whole another triangle. And I add another side, I get another triangle, another side, another triangle, and so on. So there's always two less triangles than sides. Just as a small caveat, this is the minimum number of triangles. Mi minimum number of triangles. You can get more. So for example, if you did this, watch. Oh, right. Now I just created, I have the one, two, three, four, five from before. 
I just created an extra one, two, three. So this seems like there's three extra triangles here, right? This one, this one, and this one that didn't used to be there. So how can I reconcile that? How can I make sense of that? Well, that's actually not a problem because I've also created some extra angles that didn't used to be here, right? So like this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle, they didn't used to be there. In other words, they're not part of the original polygon. Same down here, right? This angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle did not used to be there. So even though it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles, well, if I subtract out these extras, right, I've got 360 degrees here, that's two triangles, 360 degrees here, that's another two triangles, so I can take those extra angles out. So if I take that 360 degrees, which is two triangles worth of angles, and that 360 degrees, which is another two triangles worth of angles, in a sense, I've got four extra triangles worth of angles here. So if I take that away from the, oh, wait a second, something's not adding up here. Oh, I counted wrong. Maybe I should number these, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five triangles. That's six, seven. Ah, uh, but is that a triangle? What's that? That's a quadrilateral, right? So that's actually two triangles, isn't it? In fact, I can just add another line there. So now that's my, there we go. So we got seven, eight, nine. So now it looks like there are nine triangles in this shape, but I've got an extra 360 degrees there and an extra 360 degrees there. That means I subtract two triangles for these extra angles, two triangles for these extra angles. That's four triangles altogether. And if I take nine minus four, I get back to five triangles, which is what we had here originally. So I'm really talking about the minimum number of triangles it takes to construct one of these. And the easiest way to do that is just pick a point and just connect it to every other point. Now this is important to understand because if I had a shape like this, so here's a 12-sided polygon, and this is a pretty classic test question. What's the sum of the interior angles of a 12-sided polygon? Now, you could start connecting all of those lines and count up, excuse me, count up your triangles, but there's no need to do that because what have we already figured out? If there are 12 sides, then there's going to be how many triangles? 10, right? There's 10 triangles, which means there's 10 times 180, or that's a nice easy one, 1800 degrees if I add up all the interior angles inside of this polygon. Right? So the sum of the interior angles is always going to go with the number of triangles it takes to create that polygon, and that'll always be two less than the number of sides. Right? Always two less than the number of sides. So that's interior angles. What about exterior angles? So these are a little bit different. Now, notice if I just flip back for a second here, right, the interior angles for a triangle sum to 180, 360 for a quadrilateral, 540 for a pentagon, 720 for a hexagon. My point is that it's always a different number, right? Depending on the number of sides, you get a different number for the interior angles. So let's see if that works for the exterior angles as well. So first of all, we have to create some exterior angles. So what is an exterior angle? That simply means that you take a side of the polygon and you just extend it. Right? So if I extend that side, I get an exterior angle. If I extend that side, I get another one. If I extend that side, I get another one. And the exterior angles that I'm talking about, so this would be an exterior angle, this would be an exterior angle, and that would be an exterior angle. Right? So a triangle has three of them. So the question is, what would happen if I add up all of those angles? Well, I've got a little car here. Do a little example for you. So let's do a thought experiment. Imagine this was a building, and I'm looking from the top down, like on Google Maps. So I'm going to drive around the building, and I'm going to go to the corner here, and I'm going to have to make a turn now, right, because I'm going to be facing the wrong direction. So I'll turn, and then I'll drive to this corner, and I'll make another turn, and then I'll drive to the other corner and make another turn, and now I've made all the turns I need. I'm back where I started, and how far did I turn all the way around, right? Think about it. I went to here. I turned. Watch the car again. I went to here. I turned. I went to here. I turned. So how far did I turn all the way around? Well, that's easy. I turned 360 degrees, didn't I? So these three angles have to add up to 360 degrees. That's how far the car turned around. So the sum of these exterior angles is 360. Hmm. I wonder if that'll hold up for the pentagon, right? So the interior angles we know are going to be different for a pentagon, but what about these exterior angles? Well, just think about it. These are the five angles we're talking about, and we can do the same thing with that car. If we take the car over here and we bring the car up to the first angle, then we turn through it, and then we go to, whoops, 
we take the car, turn through it, we go to the next angle, turn through that angle, we go to the next angle, turn through it, next angle, turn through it, and then one more turn at the end, and we're back to where we started. But what happened there? I turned again 360 degrees, didn't I? Now here's the really cool part. Would it matter if I made 10 turns going around this shape, if it had 10 sides, or 10,000 sides, right? Does it matter how many turns I make? No matter what I do, I'm still going to go around the shape and just come back to right here where I started. I'm going to turn a full 360. So it turns out that this is really convenient because the sum of the exterior angles is 360 degrees for any, now here's what I mentioned in the beginning, convex polygon. All right. So remember, it can't have any bumps, any dents. Now think about why that would be a problem. In this polygon, I'm always making left-hand turns, right? I go up here, make a left, go up here, make a left, go up here, make a left. Here, same thing. If I go up here, make a left, go up here, make a left. If I had a polygon with a dent in it, just imagine what would happen if I tried to drive around it. Like here, I would go up here, make a left, make a left, but now in here, I have to make a right. So I'm sort of undoing some of the turns that I made already. So it won't work for a concave polygon, but any convex polygon, the sum of the exterior angles is always going to be 360. Now that's powerful because that means that it works no matter how many sides. So check out how quick this question becomes. Again, classic test question. What's the measure of one exterior angle of a regular 12 gon? Well, I know that all of the exterior angles, right, have to be 360 degrees. If there's 12 sides, then there's going to be 12 angles. So if I divide by 12, I get 30, and that's how big each exterior angle has to be. Now, one of the key things here is that I made this a regular polygon, right? If it was not a regular polygon, then all the angles wouldn't necessarily be congruent, and I couldn't count on every one of them being 30. But since it's regular, I know all the angles are the same. So really what I'm saying is like if 12 angles and there's x is the size of the angle, right? So if that's the size of my angle, then 12x has to equal 360. And I'm just solving that for x. x equals 360 over 12. So this means that I always want to work with exterior angles whenever possible because they're so much nicer since they always sum to 360 as long as it's not a dented polygon. Putting that together with this last fact about interior and exterior angles, if you think about where we get an exterior angle from, if this is the inside of the polygon, we extend a side, and that's where the exterior angle comes from, right? It always comes from extending a side, which means each exterior angle is right next to an interior angle, and they're always going to be supplements of each other. That's a super handy thing to have, because that means that if I know the exterior angle, I can find the interior, and vice versa. So let's take a look at two other kinds of problems that we can ask about polygons. Here we want to find the measure of one interior angle of a regular polygon with 18 sides. So I'm going to say, you know what, I don't want to do an interior angle. I want to find an exterior angle because it's just so much easier. So all I need to do for that is take 360 and divide it by 18. Right? 360 over 18 is 20. So that means that if I think about that relationship there with my exterior angle here and my interior angle being over here, once I know that the exterior angle is 20, I don't have to do any work to find the interior. It's just the supplement of 20, which is 160, right? That's my interior angle of a polygon with 18 sides. Super quick, right? What about a question like this? Find the measure of one exterior angle of a regular polygon whose interior angles sum to 6,660. Now we're talking about interior angles. So the question I might ask is, how many triangles, right? So 6,660 divided by 180, and I get 37. So that tells me that there are 37 triangles making up this polygon. But remember that we found out there were always two more sides, right? Or So there's two less triangles than sides. So when we talked about interior angles in the beginning of this, we figured out that no matter what shape you're looking at for a polygon, there was always two less triangles than the number of sides, right? So a six-sided polygon is made of four triangles, a seven-sided polygon made of five triangles, our 12-sided polygon was made of 10 triangles, and when we now go back to the problem we're in the middle of here, so we've got 37 triangles. Okay, well that number, 37, is two less than the number of sides. So you tell me. 
how many sides does this polygon have to have? It's got to have 37 sides, right? 37 sides. Okay, well, so let's go back to the question. We want to find the measure of one exterior angle. Well, now that I know it has 37 sides, that's really easy because the exterior angle, since they all add up to 360, that's going to be 360 divided by 37. Right? So again, all of these three concepts are connected. The exterior angles, the interior angles, and how much they sum to. The number of triangles in a polygon is always two less than the number of sides. If I can find out the number of sides, I can easily get the number of ex the size of an exterior angle because there's 360 degrees divided by the number of sides. And once I know an exterior angle, I can easily find an interior angle if I want, as we did in the last question, right? We found the exterior, and we used that to get to the interior angle. So here we did kind of the opposite, right? We started with interior angles, the sum of them, used that to figure out how many triangles there were, which told us how many sides there were, which allowed us to figure out what each exterior angle was, 9.73 degrees approximately. So if you know these three things about polygons, you can answer pretty much any question they're going to ask you. First of all, the exterior angles sum to 360. This is for any polygon as long as it is convex. Remember that means not dented, right, in a rough, rough way to think about it, give you a good intuitive sense for it. This is most of the polygons you run, you're going to run across, and this is so handy because it works for every one. Also, the interior angles are made up of two less triangles than the sides. Right, so however many sides the polygon has, if you subtract two, that tells you how many triangles, and then you can multiply by 180 to get the sum of the interior angles. That's what this is useful for, getting the sum of the interior angles. Or if you know the sum, you can use this to go backwards and get the number of sides. Right, And then finally, that the interior and exterior angles are supplementary. This one is also so, so important because this is the bridge. Right, This is the one that allows you to say, okay, if I want to find an interior angle, I could just find an exterior because it's easier and then take its supplement. All right, so this allows you to move back and forth very easily between a problem with interior angles and a problem with exterior angles. So I hope you found that helpful. I apologize this video was a little bit rushed. I didn't want it to be too long, but I wanted to try to squeeze all the important stuff in there for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.